Oh, hello. You know, in Commander, more than any other format, the word best can often be more subjective than objective. Certainly we can analyze cards and find that some are strictly better than others, but when talking about the best ways to build a deck, the best decks to build, and the best commanders to helm those decks, suddenly you get a lot of differing opinions. Now, in my humble opinion, maybe not so humble, best when describing commander does not always mean most powerful. Best new commanders that come out of a set can oftentimes be the most unique ones, the most interesting ones. Yet in looking at Wilds of Eldraine, I noticed the conversation was veering strongly towards simply the most powerful new commanders, and a lot of really interesting, really different, really unique commanders were being dropped from the conversation. So presented here are the best commanders seen through the lens of power, yes, but also the lens of the unexpected, the lens of the different, the lens of the unique, because the best new commander from Wilds of Eldraine is not necessarily what you thought. But first, this video is sponsored by playing Commander in person with friends new and old? Radical! That's right, Command Fest is coming back this October 20th through the 22nd in Orlando. And if you're looking to spend an entire weekend jamming games of Commander and showing who your best commanders are, look no further than Command Fest. Oh, I really wish I was able to attend this Command Fest because none other than Covert Go Blue will be there, and he's not alone. Among many of your favorite magic artists and magic creators, CGB has also brought along popular Hearthstone streamer Vox and now that she's learned how to play Magic, she's going to be playing Commander at Command Fest. Get some games with CGB or Voxy and spend the weekend jamming Commander as well as all kinds of awesome events like 10-pack Standard and Chaos Sealed. Not to mention unique events like Collector Sealed. There's just so much going on and Magic artists Elena Richards, Jake Murray, and Andrea Reddick will also be in attendance so you can get your favorite cards signed, maybe check out some awesome merch like playmats and prints. Command Fests are just such awesome events. Pick up a package and get cool limited edition playmats and awesome tokens, and Command Fest Orlando takes place right after the Doctor Who Commander release, so there's going to be cool Doctor Who events materializing eh, on site as well. For real, Command Fest is one of the most fun events in Magic, and I am so glad they are back. While I can't attend this one, I hope very much that if you're in the area, you'll check it out, and links to registration and detailed event information are listed in this video's description. Thank you, Command Fest Orlando, for sponsoring this video. Let's start with honorable mentions, and in fact, we're going to be giving this slot to two of Eldraine's most honored. Wait, are they more honored or less honored after their king and queen parents tragically departed? Either way, sharing the honorable mention spot is Will, Scion of Peace, and Rowan, Scion of War. Where once they were partners in the command zone, now they stand as bitter rivals. Will, Scion of Peace is a 2-4 legendary human wizard with vigilance that costs one generic, one blue, and one white mana. Will has a tap ability that states spells you cast this turn that are white and or blue cost X less to cast, where X is the amount of life you gained this turn. Activate only as a sorcery. Until now, life gain as an archetype has been highly favored toward green and white Selesnia decks, as well as black and white Orzhov decks. But finally, Azurius has a chance to shine with life gain in a way no other Azurius commander has supported before. Will's ability to discount any spell equal to how much life we gain is a substantial payoff that will lead to turns awash in value. A card like Chaplain's Blessing can now be utilized as a ritual, meaning we can follow it up with Sphinx's Revelation that will draw us five cards and gain us five more life. But if healing isn't your game, and you prefer more yin to your yang, then look no further than Rowan, Scion of War, a 4-2 legendary human wizard with menace that costs one generic one black, and one red mana. Rowan has a tap ability that states, spells you cast this turn that are black and or red cost X less to cast, where X is the amount of life you lost this turn. Activate only as a sorcery. Not since Villas, Broker of Blood, have we seen a payoff for Reanimate quite this potent. The downside of losing life with Reanimate is practically reversed with Rowan on the battlefield. Let's imagine we cast Reanimate, targeting Villas in the graveyard. We'll lose eight life, 
draw eight cards thanks to Villas, then after tapping Rowan, have our next spell cost eight less to cast. With all this mana to sink, what shall we pick as our final act of war? A crackle of power, perhaps? Or maybe just a good old-fashioned exsanguinate? I love that these two cards are I love that these two cards are powerful engines for polar opposite game plans. It's a shame the two aren't getting along anymore, but I suppose siblings will fight sometimes. Maybe when they get older, they will grow out of it. Huh? Will, all right, we're, we're done with that. Let's get on to our proper top five list. New colorless commanders don't come around often, and when they do, they are certainly never this cute, and certainly never this delicious. Coming in at number five is Sir Ginger, Meal Ender. Sir Ginger is a 3-1 legendary artifact food knight that costs two generic mana to cast. She states, Sir Ginger, the Meal Ender, has Trample, Hexproof, and Haste, as long as an opponent controls a Planeswalker. Whenever another artifact you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, put a plus one plus one counter on Sir Ginger and Scry 1. Finally, pay 2 and tap. Sacrifice Sir Ginger. You gain life equal to its power. Sir Ginger's ability to gain plus 1 plus 1 counters when our artifacts hit the graveyard can lead to commander damage KOs. So that is exactly what we will lean into. Thinking of artifacts that easily go to the graveyard, the very first that come to mind are Treasure and Food. Marching Duodrone, Noble's Purse, Gold Vein Pick, and Prying Blade are great low mana value cards that will give us a steady trickle of treasure over time. Treasure Map and treasure chest alternatively will give us a large burst of treasure after we invest some mana into their abilities. While food tokens will mostly be produced by Academy Manufactor, there are plenty of food cards we can still play that sacrifice themselves to empower Sir Ginger. Ariette's Tempting Apple, Golden Egg, Lembas, Three Bowls of Porridge, Candy Trail, and Ginger Brute are all scrumptious food artifacts that come entwined with various abilities. From stealing an opponent's creature, to drawing and scrying, to even burning a creature with two damage worth of hot soup. Now that we've indulged in treasures and treats, we need our Sir Ginger to go for the KO. Don't overthink it now. Just give the Cinnamon Lass a Shadow Spear for Trample and a Black Blade Reforged for raw damage. Go, Sir Ginger, go! Avenge your long-lost and consumed beloved once and for all. Coming in at number five, we have Secret Lair Walt Disney Lorcana. No, wait, it's Elsa. No, wait, it's Let It Snow? Coming in at number four, we have Hilda of the Icy Crown. Look, just be glad that because of Lorcana, they couldn't have stuck Elsa on this as a universes beyond or whatever. Hilda, not Elsa, is a 3-4 legendary human warlock that costs two colorless, one white, and one blue mana. Her long, lyrical ability states, whenever you tap an untapped creature an opponent controls, you may pay one. When you do, choose one. You may create a 4-4 white and blue elemental creature token, or perhaps you'd like to put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control. Or maybe just scry two, then draw a card. Threatening to steal Rhoda and Timon's crown as the de facto tap your things commander, all three of Hilda's ability choices serve as genuinely phenomenal payoffs for the strategy. Let's utilize a small squad of tappers like Gideon's Lawkeeper, Gold Meadow Harrier, Squall Drifter, and Master Decoy, who all for one low mana will tap a creature under our opponent's control. This squad along with Hilda Hilda and one mana will slowly assemble an army of 4-4 elementals, quickly giving us a respectable board state. We can then dominate the game with our army of tappers and frost elementals, as Hilda also blankets the entire ensemble in plus one plus one counters. And when we... Uh, can't hold it back anymore. Chroma's Will or For the Emperor will avalanche combat damage upon the remainder of our opponent's life totals. And don't worry if things go south, because should our forces get board wiped and the storm rages on, that won't bother us anyway. Oh my god, can you imagine if I had to do Lorcana videos? As Hilda's final option to scry two and draw a card will help us rebuild our position while behind. The number three best new commander from Wilds of Eldraine is Imidane the Pyro Hammer. Imidane is a 4-4 legendary human knight that costs two generic and two red mana. Imidane has one ability that states, whenever an instant or sorcery spell you control that targets only a single creature deals damage to that creature, Imidane deals that much damage to each opponent. Just as Wilds of Eldraine is a pseudo-sequel to Throne of Eldraine, so too is Imidane a pseudo-sequel to Torbran, Thane of Red Fell. Y'all remember, 
Torbran, right? If you felt that Torbran was a bit too open-ended in its game plan, Imidane is here to narrow the focus of what kind of burn we want to accomplish. Single target spells are king and queen here. Imidane doesn't reward us with direct player damage unless the burn spell we cast targets only a single creature. Welcome at last to Lightning Bolt deck in Commander, where we want to run Lightning Bolt in every variation of it that ever existed. I love this commander. There are just so many spells that can deal three direct damage for one mana with minimal restrictions. And speaking of one mana spells, Quest for Pure Flame will build quest counters when we deal damage, and at four counters, will let us deploy its damage doubling ability for game ending results. Though we'll have plenty of enemy targets to cast our burn spells upon, we don't only want to rely on our opponents for pyro hammer triggers. We want creatures on our side of the board to also serve as tempting targets for our various single target bolts and burns. That means cards like Coal Hauler Swine, Mog Maniac, Ill-Tempered Loner, and Brash Taunter are just great inclusions in this deck, and all of them compound Imodane's direct damage triggers with triggers of their very own. Our number two commander from Wilds of Eldraine is the story's very own wicked and deceitful antagonist, Ariette of the Charmed Apple. Ariette is a 2-4 legendary human warlock that costs one generic, one white, and one black mana. She states, each creature that's enchanted by an aura you control can't attack you or a planeswalker you control. At the beginning of your end step, each opponent loses X life and you gain X life, where X is the number of auras you control. The most fascinating twist on Enchantress that Ariette it brings to the table is that rather than using our auras to buff our creatures, we will be buffing our opponents instead. In order to extract the most life out of our enemies, I want to focus on low-cost auras so that we can hopefully play more than one per turn. Three auras that strike me immediately are the Impetus Enchantments, Ghoulish Marshal, and Parasitic Impetus. These cards conveniently goad the creature they enchant, forcing our opponent to swing the possessed force in combat. Let's also play Demonic Embrace, Griff's Boon, and Dragon Shadow, as we can more easily incentivize our opponents to swing their creatures at one another if we grant those creatures some form of evasion, like flying or fear. These last three auras are also coincidentally castable from our graveyard, giving them added flexibility. Completing this cursed group slug stew are three creatures that generate tokens directly onto our opponent's boards, giving us something to enchant whether they like it or not. On combat damage, Nettling Nuisance gives an opponent a 4-2 red pirate that's goaded for the rest of the game. Combat Calligrapher will give everyone additional 2-1 flying inklings when they swing at an opponent, and Shadrick Silverquill gives a player a 2-1 inkling at each of our combat steps. With these beaters and Ariette's sinister end step life drain, our enchanted opponent's demise is now assuredly creeping and inevitable. So who is my top pick for new commander from Wilds of Eldraine who may not be the most powerful but certainly offers something unique and unexpected in its game plan? That pick is... Adventure awaits! Wilds of Eldraine introduces the first two legendary creatures containing the adventure mechanic, allowing us to cast an adventure from the command zone for the very first time. The number one commander from Wilds of Eldraine is Baluna Grand Squall. Baluna is a 4-4 legendary giant noble with trample that costs one green, one blue, and one red mana. Baluna states, permanent spells you cast that have an adventure cost one less to cast. She may also be cast as an instant adventure spell called Seek Thrills, that costs two generic, one green, one blue, and one red mana. It states, mill seven cards, then put all cards that have an adventure from among the milled cards into your hand. Before this trusty team or giantess arrived, deck brewers hoping to make an effective list themed around the adventure cards of Eldraine and Baldur's Gate could only rely on Gorion, wise mentor. And while Gorion is powerful in his own right, as the leader of an adventure deck, it was always a bit of a shame he didn't have an adventure attached. Baluna solves this problem with flying colors, giving us not only an adventure that fills our hand with more adventures, but a subsequent way to cast them all for less mana. And we mustn't diminish the fact that she's a 4-4 trampler for 3 mana, making commander damage KOs a potential part of our story. While Baluna's design may be a bit generically good, I do not fault the developers in this particular instance, as the mechanic she's amplifying is tremendously niche, and I 
I believe could use the support. Given her color identity, Beluna has about 60 adventure cards to pick from for her deck. Some you'll want to be on the lookout for are Tin Cali Hunter, whose adventure helps us recover lost creatures from the graveyard, as well as Moon Shea Pixie and Two-Handed Axe, both of which amplify Beluna's Voltron abilities by granting her flying, double strike, and double power. Lastly, Virtue of Strength is the only card from the new Virtue Cycle that I think greatly interests our plan, as the adventure side works well with Beluna's Mill 7. Plus, who doesn't want triple mana? One of the things I really dislike in Commander is this idea of ubiquity and optimization. The idea that we're only looking for raw power and not creative, fun builds. That's one of the reasons I wanted to highlight these Commanders in this video, but now I want to hear from you. Who are your favorite Commanders from Wilds of Eldraine, and why are you looking forward to building Commander decks around them? Let me know in the comments below. And hey, if you're not just interested in best new commanders, but you want to know what cards from Wilds of Eldraine are going to be great in the 99, be sure to check out our video on the best new cards from Wilds of Eldraine for the 99 of your commander deck. And remember, Command Fest returns this October 20th through the 22nd to Orlando, Florida. Follow the link in this video's description for details and sign up information. I may not be in attendance, but you can still spend the weekend jamming games of Commander with popular magic creators like Covert Go Blue and popular Hearthstone streamer Voxy. Without a doubt, Command Fest is one of the best magic events of the year, so what better time to bring your best Commander decks down to shuffle up and play with friends new and old all weekend long. Thank you, Command Fest Orlando, for sponsoring this video. Next time on Shuffle Up and Play. Today we're playing a format that we all love and decks that we love. It's I Love Our Commander Day. I'm D. I love my Rakdos Lord of Riot's deck. Hi, I'm Jesse. My commander is Raph Capuchin, Ship's Mage. My name is Carmen Handy. This is Sakashima of a Thousand Faces and Tormod the Desecrator. I am playing with a deck that used to be one of my absolute favorites, Zozu the Punisher. I'm gonna tap three. I'm gonna Wheel of Fortune. I'm really regretting not playing the Soul Ring on turn one. Whoa! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> All right. You took nine damage. Yeah, to play my second land. Yes. And then cast my first spell. Listen. The bravest You did do that it. before both, uh, <laughs> they both came out. I would have done it either way. Do I look like a coward? Don't answer. The person to blame is right on the sleeve. Boom, boom. Ah, oh. There we the go. The spicy. There we go.